Um, yeah, so I just want to get started and say, um, a week ago today, we were gathered here to commemorate, we were gathered here, <laughs> a week ago today, we gathered to commemorate the anniversary of the Nekba, but it couldn't possibly be more clear that the Nekba has yet to end. As I'm sure most of you know, the conditions in Palestine right now are far beyond inhumane. The Zionist colonizers are ending lives with impunity. This is nothing short of ethnic cleansing. We are here today to show solidarity with our comrades in Palestine and to recognize that in this moment, Palestinian liberation is within reach. We are witnessing a third intifada. And this time with vital international working class support. Despite the Zionist terror, despite the abhorrent conditions that our Palestinian sisters, brothers, and siblings have endured for nearly a century, the revolutionary spirit is not broken. No. I want to bring attention to the beautiful acts of solidarity that we have seen across the world. We are seeing so much unity. We are seeing Palestinians in Gaza, Leeds, Jerusalem, Haifa, Nablus, and so many other places, they have risen together to fight for the right to return and essentially the right to exist. The fact that they have resisted against a military force with the most advanced weaponry in the world, without an army, without a navy, without an air force, without bomb shelters, while living under apartheid conditions, it is beyond incredible. We saw on Tuesday and Wednesday the demonstrated power of a general strike. Originating in Palestine and being brought to other parts of the world, such as New York. We are seeing workers such as those of the Italian labor union using their power to refuse to transport weapons that would have been used to murder Palestinians. Activists in the UK have shut down a factory in Leicester that was producing drugs to send to the Israeli occupation forces. <laughs> When the Leicester Fire Department was called to help the police remove the protesters from the building, they refused, left the scene, and had their union issue a statement in solidarity with Palestine. <laughs> we are seeing genuine international support for a cause that so desperately needs it. Although this is just now getting media attention in the U.S., this resistance and solidarity has been going on since the beginning of the next yeah. Through all this time, through all of the abuse, resistance to settler colonialism has never died and will never die before the abolition of capitalism. Come on. Mic check. Okay, this is much easier. Thank you guys. <laughs> okay. We good? Yeah. Everybody hear me? Yeah. If you can hear me, say free Palestine! Free Palestine! Awesome, thank you guys. I think it is vital that we reflect on what has allowed this ethnic cleansing to persist for so long. The colonizers of Palestine could never have carried out their brutal oppression had they not been backed by the imperialist powers. In fact, it was the mother of imperialism, the most vicious group of colonizers in the world, Great Britain, that originally gave Palestine to the Zionists. Yeah! Yeah! Today, Britain's vicious colonizer baby, the U.S., is funding the occupation forces yeah! the Palestinians! As capitalist colonizers, they work together to brutalize those who resist. George W. Bush's global war on terror targeted both black radicals in the U.S. and Palestinian freedom fighters. 
they refuse to recognize the real terrorists themselves. Come on, say that. Yes. They fear the freedom fighters' potential to radicalize and mobilize the working class. Anyone who threatens the oppressive capitalist world order is labeled a terrorist. The tactics that soldiers use to abuse Palestinians are the same tactics that the militarized U.S. police forces use to abuse black and brown people. They literally train together. If our oppressors are working together, why shouldn't we? What originally brought me to the Palestinian cause and clarified the necessity of the globalization of resistance was an essay by Christian Davis Bailey yes. titled Black Palestinian Solidarity in the Ferguson Gaza Era. Yes. This was the first piece that I read that truly highlighted the fact that the fight for black liberation and the fight for Palestinian labor liberation are one. That we are struggling against the same force and that until we unite, our efforts will be futile. The Ferguson Uprising was a reminder to black Americans that life under a police state is a daily reality for Palestinians. And it made it clear that here in the US, we too could be subject to military occupation should the capitalists see it fit to squash our uprisings. While black Americans fought repression in Ferguson, Palestinians tweeted uprising tactics from across the ocean. Yes. They saw their struggle in ours, and we see our struggle in theirs. Dr. Angela Davis reminded me a few days ago, yeah, give it up for Angela Davis. She reminded me in a Zoom forum a few days ago that when Palestinians protested the settler-only highways in the West Bank, they called their action freedom rides mirroring the black student movement's freedom rise in protest of segregated buses in the 1960s. Right. Go ahead, Sade. Go ahead. Uh, the militarization of police in the U.S. and the clear similarities of our struggles is not the reason why supporters of black liberation should fight for Palestine, but it serves as a channel for the connection and therefore strengthening of our struggles. The reason why we should support Palestinians is simply because they are human beings who are being denied human rights. <laughs> Palestinians have long been some of the fiercest allies for black liberation. The Palestinian Liberation Organization and the Black Panther Party strategized together and that was certainly not the first instance of black Palestinian solidarity. George Jackson, Malcolm X, Angela Davis, and so many others constantly specified that the Palestinian Liberation Movement is inextricably linked to our own. Today, we must follow in their footsteps. Black Palestinian solidarity means fighting against racism, colonialism, and capitalism. Black Palestinian solidarity means revolutionary internationalism. Yeah. Black Palestinian solidarity means fighting mass incarceration, the militarization of police, U.S. and Israeli exceptionalism, and every other force that works for the dispossession of our people. Yeah. I'd like to add that it is not just black Palestinian solidarity that is vital to this movement. The solidarity of all oppressed people with Palestine strengthens our collective push for liberation. If you know that black lives matter, you should be screaming to free Palestine! I want to see an end to the occupation an end to all settler colonialism, an end to capitalism within my lifetime. Woo! Liberation in our lifetime! And I know when we form an international workers party and stage a revolution to overthrow our oppressors, we will finally all reach liberation. Woo!
thank you all so much for coming out and allowing me the space to speak today. I appreciate it so much. I want to end with a chant that I know every single one of you knows. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea. From the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Palestine will be free. Thank you, everyone. Okay, this is just the beginning. We have more speakers coming. Next up is Nadine Al Barakali. She is a member of the Philly Free Palestine Coalition. Please give it up for Nadine! I am a 
a child of a country that knows no other way to love than justice, than freedom. In 2021, the gunshots are still going off. My country still bleeds every time they pick it apart. But it's children. It's children still stand, hand in hand, waiting to jump in their mother's arms like we never left. Like this shit has always been ours, and as long as we live, it always will. <laughs> Amazing! Oh my! Give it up for Nadine. She has a way with words. Can you hear me? Yeah. If you can hear me, scream free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free free Palestine! Free Palestine! Thank you guys. Our next speaker is an amazing young Palestinian activist, Mohammed Youssef. Please give it up! Assalamu alaikum. So for those of you looking on at us gathering and are wondering why we are here today, we are here because the United States of America is using our tax dollars to fund a militarized occupation that is terrorizing the natives of the land they are occupying. Now, now everything I have to say to you is from the heart, but I want to read you one thing. One thing I've seen online during the most recent bombardment of Gaza. Here's a note from Zaina to her mother. Mom, my love, I am so, so scared. If we die, I hope they can put us in the same grave because then I can stay in your arms. And they could dress me in their eight clothes because I haven't enjoyed them yet. Your daughter, Zaina. Six years old. This is embarrassing. We are the leader of the free world. We act, we masquerade as the moral compass of the world, yeah. right? We're the ones with the morals, yet we allow something like this, we fund something like this. They take from your income money to fund this. It's despicable. And I'm, and I'm, a, I'm a big believer that us human beings in general, doesn't matter where you're from, we're born as good people. What make us manipulate, what make us bad people per se, is manipulation and misinformation. So that's exactly how Israel is enabled to commit these crimes. There's three key factors. And of course, there's many more factors, but there's three key factors I wanted to highlight in all of this. First thing is the control of the media. Through controlling the media, they stigmatize certain words. They stigmatize certain words and weaponize other words. For example, Hamas, Gaza, Palestine. It's, it's considered political suicide or just suicide to your career in general to speak up for Palestine. But yet, speaking up for Israel... That's the right thing to do. That's what they tell us at least, right? This, the second way they do it, the second way they do it is they are all united, Zionists in general. Now, a lot of them are incentivized. But if you notice, whenever someone speaks up about Palestine or against Israel, they're meet with a brutal force. And they're all saying the same thing. It's very coincidental. See, all of us here, we act on our own, our own accord. That's why none of us are saying the same thing. Now, the third way that they manipulate is through lobbyists yep. who pressure our politicians. Right. You cannot be elected in the United States of America if you support Palestine, with the exception of the Congress people that we come have on, today. Come on, come To combat something like this, we need to be more sophisticated in our approach. We need to do exactly what they're doing. We need to stigmatize words, weaponize words, chastise people who defend the terrorist, illegal, racist, Occupation of Israel. Rather than having, and there's nothing wrong with having 50 organizations, but we need one big one. Now let me sell you a dream. Let me sell you a dream of us people over here affecting a local election. Now why am I saying a local election? It's more realistic for us to affect a local election and to have a presence here where no one could be elected in any public office in the city of Philadelphia without supporting Palestine. Let's emulate our brothers in Dearborn, Michigan. Let's emulate our brothers in Madison, New Jersey. Anyone who's interested
interested in organizing or starting an organization, please feel free to reach out to me. Seth Mohammed Yusuf on Facebook, formerly for Seth on Instagram, PAC underscore GP. You can find me anywhere. Tapian! Tapian! Thank you, Mohammed. Next up, we have an amazing speaker who is near and dear to my heart, so you all better give her support. My good friend Fatima, member of the Philly Free Palestine Coalition and the Philly Earth Alliance. Where is she? Yo, come on, Fatima! Where's she at? <laughs> Oh no. Fatima to the front. Fatima to the front. Firstly, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. I'm so happy to see such a big crowd be Let's here. Go, Fatima. Thank yeah, you. Fatima. Especially because we have never been closer to Palestinian liberation than we have been now. Say that! Say that! Israel has called a ceasefire. To some, this ceasefire has been met with relief. Israel's brazen inhumanity is no longer at the forefront of our minds. Finally, some may be thinking, we can return to our status quo system, which continues to demoralize and dehumanize the Palestinian people, where the ongoing siege of Gaza has led to unemployment rates that are just over 40%. It was reported by the United Nations that Gaza would not be fit to live in by 2020 and that 95% of the water would be undrinkable. Well, guess what? It's 2021. And two million Gazans continue to live under these conditions in one of the most densely populated places on earth. In the West Bank, Palestinians must live under the Israeli government. The unemployment rate is at about 18% and families are frequently pushed out of their homes as we have recently seen in Sheikh Jarrah. Imagine that! While Israel enjoys the bountiful resources of Palestinian land, children do not have access to clean water. I'm sure that we frequently find ourselves critical of the American right. After all, under the Trump administration, Jerusalem was named capital of Israel and the Golan Heights was annexed. But this framework was only given to him by his predecessors. Come on, come on. Moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem was a promise that Republicans and Democrats yes. alike campaigned yes. on. Yes. And in order to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, Trump drew on the Jerusalem Embassy Act, which was passed in 1995 under the Clinton administration. Say that. Come on. A Democrat. Come on, Fatima. And it raised overwhelming bipartisan support. Under the Obama administration, Israel received an almost $40 billion aid package. While Americans here suffered without health care and access to housing. And now, under the Biden administration, not much is different. In fact, Vice President Kamala Harris vowed an everlasting support for Israel and protection against Iran as our country's leader gave away $700 million to Israel in the midst of a pandemic. The American people suffer while they give away billions to brutalize brown people in Palestine. Come on, Come on Fatima. These conditions should shake every liberal and progressive in America to their core, as the crime Israel commits each and every day stands against their liberal belief system. Unsurprisingly, they do not care. Israel continues to champion billion dollar aid packages each year. It is plain to me, and I'm sure to countless of others who have been made victim by settler colonial states, that even the most progressive politician will not stand against occupation, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid. Because let's be real, it's the very foundation the United States has built itself on. We cling desperately to this system and attempt to convince ourselves that perhaps reform is the answer. Yet we remain shackled until we have a complete upheaval of our status quo systems. Freedom and liberation for all oppressed groups will never reign possible. Let's go! 
I am reminded of the Algerian War of Independence. More than 1.5 million martyrs died under violent French colonial rule between the years 1954 and 1962. These war crimes went largely unnoticed by the West as almost every French ally at the time has gained its nation through the violent dispossession of an indigenous people, the United States included. Despite the overwhelming silence from the West, Algerians resisted for eight consecutive years and won their land back. There is hope! It is imperative that we do not reason with Zionism, as it is colonialism at heart. I will leave you with this quote that Frantz Fanon once said. Colonialism is not a thinking machine, nor a body endowed with reasoning facilities. It is violence in its natural state. Thank you. There's a police presence here, and I want every single one of you to please, please be very safe. Watch out for each other. Be careful. Up Against the Law is here as legal observers. They're here to support us. Okay. The number for Up Against the Law, which if you can, you should write down on your phone or your arm like I have, is 484-758-0388. Or just memorize it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Now we are. I'm in. Can we say it up again? Say the number again. One more time. The number is 484 758. Can we do people's mic? 484. Yes. People's mic. 484. 
Puerto Rico stuff in our kitchen. I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> I'm gonna stay right here for a second. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm gonna stay right here for a second. I don't even know. I'm gonna stay right here for a yeah.
Okay, everybody, I need everybody behind the banners. No, so much to do. Everybody behind the banner so we can start. Let's get as organized as possible. We're getting ready to march in a few minutes. If everyone can make sure they're behind the banners. Our cheers are to the front. And some to the front. Once again, we're getting ready to march. Free, free, Palestine!
the Camp David Summit, the administrations of the Palestinian National Authority, and hundreds of ignored United Nations resolutions. The masses of the people are taking over the streets throughout the world, as we have done throughout the eternal struggle for black liberation. And we are declaring that just as black lives matter, Palestinian lives matter. be placated. This time we will not go home after a simple ceasefire. A fire has been lit beneath the feet of the working classes of the world and we must be sure that it will not go out until the dream of Palestinian liberation has been realized once and for all. Therefore we in the Philadelphia Free Palestine Coalition stand before you today to issue our demands. And until they are met, these streets will not stop. This movement will continue to burn. Nothing will stop the people until Palestine is released from bondage. First and foremost, we demand the immediate recognition of the rightful sovereign Palestinian state as it was declared on December 15, 1988. Every day the capitalist ruling class disingenuously bemoans the elusiveness of the so-called two-state solution while refusing to recognize the state of Palestine. Every day they claim to justify their assaults and siege of Gaza by saying that they are defending Israel's right to exist. Whose right is being denied? Recognize Palestine's right to exist. <laughs> Second, we demand an immediate end to all IDF aggression against the peoples of Palestine. The occupied Palestinians, especially in Gaza live in an open-air prison camp. They are deprived of water, of electricity, of medical care. Then every few years they are bombarded by aerial campaigns and we are told that this is a war with two sides, between two religions, with an equal case to defend. Palestine has always been multi-religious. Right. Jewish people have always lived in Palestine for all these thousands of years. live in Palestine. Jews live in Palestine. This has nothing to do with religion. This is an indigenous people being ethnically cleansed for the theft of land and resources for the profit of capital. Nothing more. Third, we demand the immediate withdrawal from the occupied territories in Gaza, the West Bank, and the Golan Heights. This is a military occupation which began in 1967. My father has grown old watching his Palestinian siblings languish there. The international community has cried out year after year and decade after decade for them to be released. Let these people breathe free at last and give them their right of return. Fourth, we demand the immediate halting of all Israeli demolitions of Palestinian homes and construction of all new settlements. And for the people of Sheikh Jarrah, leave them alone! Do not attempt to take one more Palestinian family out of their home. They shall not be touched. And finally, we demand democratic, multinational, multireligious, multiracial workers control. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. From the river to the 
Thank you, Matem. It was incredible. That was our last planned speaker, but we are now going to have an open mic. Um, if everyone could create some space on the left side of the stage, if you want to join the open mic, please form a line over here. Our first open mic speaker is our Algerian brother, Mohamed Goba. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings to all my brothers and sisters, Muslim and non-Muslim. Palestine Shuhada, as an Algerian brother, I want to voice my opinion and say, we are with Palestine, Dalam or Madluma, oppressed or non-oppressed. Ikhwan, inshallah, today we're going to talk about intentions, as I see every single one of you guys. Palestinians, Syrians, Sudani, Pakistani, Bengali, and the list goes on and on and on. The cause is the same. We bleed with our Palestinian brothers and sisters. We feel the pain. And in terms of this conversation, inshallah, we're going to be talking about the Muslim brothers and sisters and then the non-Muslims. As the Muslim brothers and sisters, the advice I give myself and everyone else is that we should fear Allah and that we should rectify our conditions first and foremost. If we were to do the protest, that we do the protest with diligence and respect to both the people here, the people watching us, the people securing us. We should understand why we are here. We are here to start a movement. We are here to liberate Palestine. We are here to stand with our brothers and sisters. For if this happens in Syria, we'll stand together. If this happens in Egypt, we'll stand together. If this happens in Algeria, we'll stand together. <laughs> with the movement of Black Lives Matter to our non-Muslims, we appreciate you for standing with us and standing for justice. We commend you. We love you. Just as the Black Lives Movement made people uncomfortable and made it a taboo topic, we should do the same with Palestine. If you are a business owner, you probably support Palestine. If you are a student, and you see someone talking bad about Palestine, you stand for Palestine. If we are going about our day and we see people speaking bad about the issue of Palestine, let us make that issue taboo. In terms of our students that are in the high schools and the universities, understand your purpose, understand who you are, understand your origin, be proud of your origin, be proud of where you came from, and be proud of who you stand for. Inshallah, we are here with you until the end of time. We are with the Haq. And Allah Azza wa Jal says the Haq will always prevail. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on our mo open mic is world champion Rami, the son of Palestine, Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum. You have to know what that word means, what those words mean, and you gotta live them. When we start living these words, we'll understand what's going on. This is, has been all written before we were, we were all alive. You have to know those words, because when you know those words, you'll begin to understand what is happening. And we are here, we have to learn how to just take our course. It is not on enough for us to say free, free Palestine. We have to live free Palestine. And we have to be ready to do anything for Palestine, not just in words. We have to be like our brothers, our soldiers of Gaza. Our soldiers. Our soldiers of the resistance. We have the resistance. You have to start. 
And when you start to understand those words, you will start becoming less afraid of saying the H word. What is the H word? They're the only ones that's fighting for Palestinians. All the world leaders with their war planes, with their tanks, and so soldiers for nothing but they have no Iman. They have no faith. That's why they have no heart. The lights is on but nobody's home. We have to understand that this is a fight and it needs men and women who are courageous to fight. Freedom is not free. You have to fight for it throughout history. It wasn't free for any country, for any people. And it will not be for us. We have to fight for our country, for our people. That's what this means. Victory. How do you get victory? By competing and fighting for it. Are you willing to fight for your victory? Yeah. Are you willing to do anything for your victory? Yeah. Then show it. Don't just say it. We have to show it and that's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. We are all, every single one of you, you are a part of this victory that is inshallah coming. You are, we are all a part of it. You need to all take your phones out right now. That's how they're losing this yeah. fight. It's not a war, but it is a fight. That's you all need to all take your phones out and take videos of this and tweet it and put it on Facebook and do it for the gram and show everybody. Show them what is happening. Show them the same in Israeli or Palestinian thing. This is a human rights thing. You have those people that will tell you, Oh, but they're defending themselves. They're fighting back. All you have to do to shut them up is this. Tell them, if you had a home, and somebody came in and took 80% of your home, would you be okay with giving them 20% of it? No! And why should we? Ask them if somebody took 80% of it, and that 20% that they gave you, they continue to steal more, and more, and more, and give you the most smallest thing that they can give you. Would you be okay with it? No. So why should we? They're gonna shut up every time. And then ask them, what would you do if somebody did that to you? They're gonna tell you fight back. And that's when they shut up. We have to fight. We have to fight for our freedom. It's not enough for us to say free, free Palestine. This is where it begins, but this is not where it ends. La ilaha illallah. Thank you everyone. Next up we have our 17 year old Palestinian friend Ragad Ahmad. <laughs> today it is truly something beautiful to see people of all different ethnic and religious backgrounds here to support the Palestinian cause for freedom now unfortunately after election after election president after president we hear the words Israel has the right to defend itself American financial support to Israel did not start with Biden, it started with the formation of the Israel State in 1948. Now many people question why America feels the need to assist Israel in a quote unquote defending itself with $38 billion when it is much more needed here with people who do not have medical aid or even homes to live. Unfortunately, it is very simple, and I'm, going to, I'm here to explain it to you today. For all of you history junkies, I want you to ask yourselves, what was America before it declared its independence from Britain? A guerrilla group. No, not a guerrilla group. It was 13 colonies. 13 British colonies. In the 1700s, Britain started occupying the New World lands, which is now America. Unfortunately, 
This land did not belong to them just as the Israeli land does not belong to them. It belonged to Native Americans. I want every single one of you to reflect on yourselves and to ask yourself, do you truly believe that America has went from a 13 colonies to a 50 state nation on ethics and morals? No. No. It's unjustifiably so. Native American land, ethnically cleansing them, displacing them, and practicing a part-time to achieve what they have achieved today. Now, does this sound familiar? Reflect on yourselves again. What is Israel doing today? Israel started off as colonies, as colonies to escape ethnic and religious persecution, and now it is an independent state. Did it, like America, establish its state off of ethics and off of morals? No. no. It has ethnically displaced, it has ethnically cleansed, displaced, and developed state-sanctioned discrimination and state-sanctioned violence towards our Palestinian people. And this is why America feels the need to support Israel. Because if they were to condemn Israel, and if they were not to support Israel, they must condemn themselves and not support themselves and claim the unofficiality of their own state. Now, America is based off of democracy. What does that mean? That means that every single one of your voices, it matters. It matters. And it is our duty to use our voices to amplify those who are being silent. Two days ago, Israel declared a ceasefire. Not Hamas, not Palestine, not Gaza, it was Israel. And I'm going to explain to you why. It's because Israel has lost control of the narrative because you are not people um, decrease their efforts to spread awareness about Palestine and this happens every year. After every single intifada, after every single Palestinian uprising, we see people forget about the Palestinian people because we reached a small state of stability or peace. Now, I urge all of you, this is a generation of change. The last protest I attended, a 60 year old American woman approached me and she explained to me the euphoric feeling she was feeling. She explained to me that years ago when she was protesting for the same thing that we are protesting against today, it was a mere couple of people. And today you see thousands of people supporting the Palestinian cause. Colombia, for Brazil, 
an army, an unethical army, a terrorist organization like Israel is knowledge and knowing our history. A lot of people stand up here and talk about Palestine, but as soon as somebody comes with any, any manipulation of the truth, we fall for it. We have to know our history. We have to know that we're not settling for a ceasefire. This is a win for us. When the most strongest unethical army in the world asked for a ceasefire from freedom fighters that don't have half or not even close to the amount of weapons that the Israelis have, you know we won something. But that's not the big war. We are not going to stop till Palestine is free all the way from the river to the sea. We're not just... We're not just... We're not just chanting this. We say it and we mean it. They tried to bomb the news in Gaza, the Jazeera building, and now look at all of you guys. Every one of us is Al Jazeera now. We're sharing the information. <laughs> Use the every single opportunity you can to share the truth. We don't need to fight. We don't need to be violent here. They're fighting for us in Palestine.